General Dynamics Land Systems UK has delivered two fully electric 8x8 multi-utility tactical transport, or MUT, unmanned ground vehicles to the British Army. The MUT, which exists in both wheeled and tracked variants, is a rugged, reliable small unit force multiplier providing increased battlefield capabilities. As a controller-less small unit robotic follower, it lightens the load across the different combat operations. As a remote-controlled or teleoperated teammate, it provides standoff from the threats or increased projection of combat power. The MUT is engineered to easily evolve to accommodate new payloads, including intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition and reconnaissance ISTAR, and lethality and proven level of enhanced autonomy that are already fielded elsewhere. According to a Greek source, the plan elaborated by the General Staff of the Greek Army for the gradual replacement of the old M113 APCs indicates a will to run the procedures very quickly, so that it can bring to Greece not only 1200 M1117 Guardians, also designated armored security vehicles based on the Cadillac Gage V100 and V150 commandos, but also 350 and 2A2 Bradleys at the same time. The Greek team that will go to the United States for the selection of the vehicles from the surplus stock of the US Army and the National Guards has already been selected. These Bradleys will bring much desired support to the fleet of Leopard 2HL main battle tanks. This variant was developed on the basis of experience gained by the US Army from Operation Desert Storm in the Gulf in 1993. The departure date of the Greek team to the United States is considered a matter of weeks. The reason for not already set a front date is linked to reasons of protection against the COVID-19. Let's remind that in December 2019, the US government planned to donate almost 60 M2A2 Bradleys in Operation Desert Storm configuration to Croatia. The Greek Bradleys will obviously come from the same stock. In 2017 and 2018, Lebanon also received M2A2 Bradleys from the same stock. According to the Russian website Avia Pro, the Russian army has tested its mobile laser weapon system called Peresvet in Syria. The new Russian made laser weapon is said to have shot down an Israeli UAV in the southwestern part of Syria. The Peresvet was unveiled by Russian President Putin in March 2018. In July 2018, the Russian Ministry of Defense released a video showing the new Peresvet. In December 2019, the first regiment with avant-garde missiles and Peresvet lasers went on combat duty. Last January, the Russian army announced it had planned to conclude this year the research and development work aiming at developing a tactical laser to destroy drones and lightly protected ground targets. The weapon will be deployed by the ground forces, the aerospace forces and the navy. The Russian-made system looks very similar to the US ANSEQ-3 laser or XN-1 developed by the US Navy. US forces in Korea and the South Korean Army have put in place new interceptor missiles onto the Channel High Altitude Area Defense Base in Seongyu, located in North Gyeongsang Province, on the 29th of May. The delivery began late in the previous evening and ended around 6 a.m. on the Friday morning. The new missiles are the same type and quantity as the previous one, a Korean Defense Ministry official said, stressing that the current ones reach the end of their operating cycle. The ministry, however, declined to mention the exact number. Nevertheless, no additional TAD launchers have entered South Korea on the base, the official said. Let's recall that the US installed the TARD system in Seongyu with a total of six launchers in 2017 to counter North Korea's missile threat. There are eight interceptor missiles for each launcher, putting the total number of missiles in South Korea at 48. According to a press release published on the 2nd of June, Israel Aerospace Industries has completed a dual operational fire and trial at sea with LORA, or Long Range Artillery Weapon System an accurate ballistic strike missile. LORA can be launched from both ground and sea-based platforms against infrastructures, bunkers or buried fortifications deep inside enemy territory. Performed in the open sea, the trial included the launch of two missiles to a predefined hit point at sea. The complex trial included 
two scenarios. The first one involved a short range loan to 90 km and the second one to a long range of 400 km. In its ground version, the weapon system was deployed on a ship in the open sea to comply with the safety requirements for this type of test. The missile was loaned from an operational system that comprises a command trailer and a ground launcher. Under both scenarios, the missile was launched to its trajectory, navigated its course to the target and hit it with utmost precision. Both the weapon system and the missile successfully met all of the trial's objectives. According to an article published by the Australian Naval Daily website on the 3rd of June, the Australian Navy keeps on track the project of C-5000 Future Frigate Project that will provide nine hunter-class frigates optimized for an anti-submarine warfare. They will be known in service as the hunter-class frigates and will replace the Anzac-class frigates of the Australian Navy. The hunter-class frigates will be built by ASC Shipbuilding at the Osborne Naval Shipyard. ASC Shipbuilding, currently wholly owned by the Commonwealth, will become a subsidiary of BAE Systems during the building process. The Hunter class will provide the Australian Defence Force with the highest levels of lethality and deterrence. They will have the capacity to conduct a variety of missions independently or as part of a task group with sufficient range and engines to operate effectively throughout the region. According to a tweet released on the 3rd of June by Navy Lookout, HMS Prince of Wales, the second Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier of the British Navy, will be used in the future to test large unmanned aerial vehicles. This drone project will be developed in collaboration with the 700X Naval Air Squadron. This unit was formed to oversee the development and innovation of cutting-edge remote piloted flight systems within the British Navy. According to news released in February 2019 by the News website, the United Kingdom is looking to create a new state-of-the-art unmanned aerial vehicle that could fly from the decks of the British Navy's two new aircraft carriers. The main idea is to use the aircraft carrier HMS Prince of Wales in 2021 as an experimental platform and see whether they can get large drones flying from it. Soldiers assigned to the 101st Airborne Division launched the first flight of the Martin VBAT unmanned air vehicle at Fort Campbell in Kentucky as part of the future Tactical Unmanned Aircraft System Capabilities Assessment. The assessment will evaluate selected systems to define the capabilities needed in the next generation US for brigade combat teams. Data gathered during the assessment will be critical to determining the requirements for the replacement of the RQ-7 Shadow. The VBAT is the first aircraft of its size and capability to successfully demonstrate the ability to take off vertically, transition to wing-borne flight, and land from a hoover. The VBAT is capable of hovering over selected locations along a pre-programmed flight path before returning vertically to sea or ground landing locations in highly confined areas. The U.S. Army selected two other unmanned aircraft systems in 2019 as candidates to replace the RQ-7 Shadow, the JAM-20 by Actorus UAV and the L-3 Harris FVR-90. The Airbus A400M Atlas airlifter has successfully achieved certification of the simultaneous paratrooper dispatch capability. It also completed the full industrial development of the TIES paratrooping development capacity with a maximum dispatch of 116 paratroopers using both side doors. The certification tests, completed last May, combined an extensive paratrooping campaign of more than 1,000 jumps along with the implementation of new capability development methodologies based on recording and 3D modeling of paratrooper jump trajectories. With the completion of this milestone, the A400M will be able to carry 116 paratroopers who can jump two at a time from the ramp in free fall or through the paradrop side doors with automatic parachute opening. The aircraft has also been certified for automatic low flying capability. India's Air Force has inducted the first final operational clearance standard Tejas light combat aircraft into squadron service. Apart from all the capabilities of the aircraft, the FOC variant additionally comes with an air-to-air -air refueling capability, close combat gun, additional drop tanks, beyond visual range visibility capability, updated avionics, 
and flight control software suit. Well, keep in mind that Defense Web TV has more than 1,400 videos on its YouTube channel. So please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell here and there to be informed of the latest defense and security news.